everyone, the man of stumbling thoughts, Chaplain Dell here, and um, but I wanted to talk about a couple of things tonight. Fear, uh, the accuser of the brethren, grace, the Holy Spirit, and specifically the Holy Spirit, uh, how the Holy Spirit works with human beings. Now, we've all heard on uh, these false broadcasts about the healing services and show up at, uh, I don't know, 1500 and we're going to, which is three o'clock p.m. And we're going to have a healing service and the great pastor Zombidi, or I'll make it up a name, you know, is going to perform healing because he has the giftings of healing and all. And I don't know, these are always um, sensationalistic things uh, um, that people seem to follow, things that grab people, entertainment, if you will, things that grab people's attention or people put their hope in. But let me tell you about a real healing. When I was in the street ministry years ago under Dr. Gross, um, we were in Bible study, and I was bent over at 90 degrees. I mean, my back was in really bad shape. And uh, I'd, I'd walk the street with my Bible. I didn't even have a car then. I'd walk down the, the city um, over to the pastor's house, and we'd have our Bible study. And I did this usually, usually about three times a week I'd be over there. Did a lot of study and, and took a lot of training from this man. You might not know it to listen to me, but I did. And for about six years. Well, one night after my, when my back was all messed up, after the Bible study, Dr. Grace said, stand up, Ron. I feel led to lay my hands on you. I'm going to pray for you. And I said, okay. And I did. And, and when he went around behind me and laid his hands on the lower portion of my back, and he, he uh, prayed to the Lord. I don't even remember what he said. It's not important, but he prayed to the Lord uh, uh, that, uh, I guess, for the removal of uh, of the uh, the pain that I was experiencing. And he, uh, some of the stuff I really couldn't understand he was saying because he was in prayer. But what the result of it was that immediately that stiffness in my back was drawn out, and that stiffness and pain was drawn out into his hands. It was like it was vacuumed from my lower back. And I was so excited that I immediately wanted to run out and scream it from the rooftops. And he said, he said immediately afterwards, he said, Roland, I want you to see something. Feel my hands. Feel my hands. Feel how warm he is. He says, that's a real healing. And, of course, demonic healings are cold. And I don't mean to get into occult science and things, but I'm just, I'm telling you what he taught, uh, what he said, and uh, with some of the things that I've seen. But the whole point is, <clears throat> and he he told me this, he said, he said, you know, I can't do this. I can't drive over to somebody's house and and uh, say, I'll be over and uh, we're going to have a healing and pray for you. And I'm sure the Lord will heal it. He said, I, he said, I can't do that. He said, I can't do it. He says, you know, it's only when the Lord moves me to do it. When the Lord moves me, the Lord tells me to do it. He says, then only can I do it. Because the power is not of himself, but of Jesus Christ. And that's how the Spirit works. And the Lord can give grace to the wicked as well as the righteous. Because the Lord will do what the Lord will do. Um, you know, in, that, in the scriptures where it says, Many will come to me on that day saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we do all the things in your name? And Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. And that's because the Lord can be gracious to the world as well as his children. Uh, the Lord will do what he will. And far be it from any man to put God in the box and say what God can do and what God can't do. Far be it from any other man, even if they call themselves a shepherd, to say what the, our ultimate shepherd is, the Lord Jesus Christ will do and not do. And if they are doing that, they're overstepping themselves. And it may be a heresy. It may be wickedness that they're teaching. And I think Lordship Salvation, frankly, teaches wickedness. Um, and they may do it unknowingly. 
I, out of ignorance. But the thing is, they're no more in control of God's grace and God's mercy to, to another human being than a man on the moon. That's just like the healing thing. Only God moves as God will move. Now, in his children, he promises they'll never be given more than they're able to handle. I'm talking about the ones that are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, that the Lord is doing the work within. You know, our, the Holy Spirit is reconnected to our human spirit. That's what, that's what known as born again is. We're reconnected. We have spiritual life, spiritual life given to us. Now, from there on down, you know, the spirit is, uh, I mean, the soul is connected with the body, and the body is a body of flesh and sin and corruption. So it takes the Lord a long time to regenerate uh, or sanctify, more specifically sanctify, the soul into the likeness of Christ. And the more that we cooperate with that, the more that we have a heart towards the Lord, the easier the easier it will go on us. But if we um, yield to the flesh, we'll reap the corruption of the flesh. Now, I do not believe there's anywhere in the scripture that says once you've been regenerated by the Holy Spirit of God, once you've been plugged back in, that you can uh, walk away from God so far as to become unplugged. Uh, no, there's one Christ, one salvation. That means you get plugged in once and you're sealed. The Bible says specifically that you're sealed for the day of redemption. And it's like a silver certificate. You turn it in and you redeem that. So <clears throat> one of the biggest things you can do with people or Satan does with people is he uses fear. Instead of, and perfect love casts out fear, by the way. But Satan uses fear to take control over people. He's the accuser of the brethren. And the idea that you can walk away from Jesus Christ because you didn't do something right, okay, is a fear tactic. It is. It's a fear tactic. And people, uh, especially with uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus, people are living in fear for their lives and about their life. And I think uh, Lordship salvation is much like a virus, a fear. It's something of the enemy. It's something that shouldn't be there. But it twists the truth of God spiritually, because I told you how the Spirit works. God will move when God will move. And it's up to us whether we want to follow it's like a light switch. Either we turn it on and we walk in light or we turn it off and we walk in darkness. And you can reap what you say, you sow, and you can be chastened of God. But God, just like the prodigal son, he never throws any of us away. Did you hear what I said? He never throws any of us away. He never becomes so um, discouraged, so upset with us that uh, we're cast into the lake of fire. The Lord does not do that. The Lord may decide, listen, you're really screwing up. You're not you're you're not helping the efforts or yourself, and he may decide for your spiritual life to bring you home early so you can do less damage. But there's no place in the scripture where it talks about having your name blotted out of the book of life. And that passage in Revelation says you will not blot your name out of the book of life. So I don't want to belabor that point, but in closing, I want to read this. I want to read this uh, text about being anxious for your life. And this is, again, the Holy Spirit, God. God is a Holy Spirit, how God works. Matthew 6, 25 through 34, I'm only going to read through 27. It says, therefore, I say unto you, be not anxious for your life, what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, nor yet your body, what ye shall put on. Is, this not, is, is not the life more than food and the body more than raiment? Behold, the birds of the heaven, that they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit unto the measure of his life? And that's up to verse 27. 
The other capital verse is Luke 12, 22 through 32. So, let's talk about the spiritual world, how the Lord works. And it's based on dependency on the Lord, our faithful provider. The Lord is maybe faith. We may not be faithful to the Lord, but the Lord is faithful to us. And it's based on deep being dependent on him. And because he does good to us when we don't deserve it, we, we should love him. And most people love him more that are delivered from, I don't know, uh, different levels of sin. But to say that, that to say that uh, that grace is a broad rooter's doctrine is, I'm sorry, but it's arrogance and pride. And it shows that they don't understand how the Spirit of God, who the Spirit of God is or how he works. Frankly, that's what it shows. And it shows bad doctrine, bad, bad Bible understanding, partial Bible understanding. And, uh, you know, I know I'm not the best speaker. And I may not have the highest credentials uh, in the world, but um, I know through knowing Jesus Christ, and like I said about my trip to the store today, that there's never been a time in my life where, um, especially if I changed my mind about something, the Lord wasn't there. And I also want to say that the Lord's been gracious to me when I thought that I had to I thought I had to discipline myself a certain time to be in the Bible or I wasn't going to grow in the Lord. And the Lord told me, Roland, you don't have to do that. Just listen to me. And also after I, Jesus was next to me and I died opposite this room when I was getting uh, accredited online uh, in different Bible schools. The Lord told me, follow me, Roland, follow me. You see, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with him. So, you know what? You, uh, an alarm going to go off when somebody says that um, grace is a broad rotor's doctrine because that sounds like something that Satan would say. That sounds like saying Christ is not uh, able enough to deliver us from sin, that that we have something to do with it, that the completed work of Jesus Christ uh, has a breaking point. And that is something that Satan would teach. And whether they realize they're teaching it or not, I don't know. But I'm trying the best that I can to point that out. And I know I don't get many views anymore. Uh, I never get, all I get is thumbs down. And I probably built my following through this man that's a, a silver-tongued devil. But uh, you know what? I'm going to do the best I can to enlighten people to the heresy in which he's teaching. Good day. Oops, I forgot to tell you my toilet paper story. Uh, at this morning, I didn't manage to get to the store on time, and I got there an hour late after the truck came in with the toilet paper at the supermarket, and uh, I was upset about that because we were out of paper in the house, as you can imagine, and the guy told me that, especially when they told me the guy bought three 24 packs, uh, as, soon as, as soon as they get there, the stuff flies off the shelf, but I was just reading about Matthew 6, 25 through 27, about be not anxious for your life and how the Lord provides for the birds and are we not much more than them uh, verse. And um, so to give you an example of this, uh, how the Lord is always there for us uh, when we go to him um, and he doesn't, as Tor Corey Ten Boone once said, the Lord doesn't give you um, the ticket until you need to get on the train. Uh, it's perfect timing. And that's how it is when you walk in the Spirit. It's never ahead of time, and it's never late. It's perfect timing, as my wife and I used to say all the time when we were dating. But, so, I come out of the store, and I said, Lord, I still haven't got any toilet paper. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And one thing I've learned to do, and you can all laugh at me because it doesn't make any sense to the natural mind, but I just went uh, with my intuition. I says, you know what? I'm going to take a right turn, and I started driving. I didn't know where I was going. I just felt like I'd take a right turn. You know, a lamp on two by feet, one one step at a time, and then I made another right, and another right, and, and then another right. Well, guess what? I just did a big fish hook. Uh, into the same 
extended parking lot where I was in the supermarket where they were out of TP. So, I, you know, and I said, I beat up on myself. I said, oh, idiot, you didn't do anything but drive down the road and make a big circle and come in the back way. I said, well, let me go in the hardware store while I'm here anyway. And to make a long story short, as I went in the hardware store, I went back there and I found toilet paper. Praise God, I found toilet paper. And I put 10 of them in my basket. Um, and I didn't know how many I could get. But I put 10 of them in my basket and some hand sanitizer. And I went up to pay for my um, toilet paper and my hand sanitizer. And the woman said, you can only do five. We have a limit of five uh, toilet papers. I said, well, okay. I said, I didn't know. And there was a, uh, I don't know, a construction worker type guy in front of me. And he says, well, I'll take those other five. I said, sure, here. So he took the five and I had my five. And I was praising the Lord just for him providing that toilet paper. And the point is, uh, it's not something that I planned. It's something that I did in faith, intuitively, moving in faith. And that's how the Lord works. And it doesn't make sense oftentimes to the natural mind. We just have to do it. We just have to move in obedience. And it's not a, you know, obedient like you're going to get flogged if you don't do it, that type of obedience. It's just that you go, okay, Lord, this makes no sense to me, but I'm going to do it just like when I was driving. And uh, all I did was make a big hook around to the other end of the parking lot, and there in the hardware store was the toilet paper. So the Lord never leaves us nor forsakes us. He doesn't, he, he knows we're fallible. He knows we make mistakes, but his grace is this thing that is never ending, especially to his children. Good day.